football. Very pleased to have Jay Lehman, studio analyst for the Big Ten, joining us now. And of course, a game analyst as well, former All-American linebacker at Illinois. Jay, I know you're never short for enthusiasm, but what's your sense today as you find out the Big Ten football is back? Well, I'm excited. I mean, we, we had heard rumors for the past two weeks, especially the last two days, that the Big Ten could be back. Uh, I think it really sets uh, something special that there's a sense of urgency. Nothing's guaranteed. I mean, no game is guaranteed. Usually you think you got 12 games guaranteed this season. Um, hopefully we have a full nine game stretch here where the Big Ten can play. But what I think you're going to see is you're going to see everything come out from the get-go, starting October 23rd and 24th. I don't think offensive coordinators are going to hold stuff back. I don't think freshmen are going to be held back. I think people are going to play at their highest level from the get-go because it's kind of all or nothing when you look at it in a nine-game season uh, for the Big Ten. Jay, what uh, stood out to you about what you heard from the Big Ten today? I mean, for me, I I think they really took um, their time. Obviously, they looked at how the NFL had done some stuff. They saw some other football games uh, and other conferences being played. And they have very strict protocols. You know, I think uh, one of the things that stuck out to me was, uh, as I read the statement, if a player tests positive, uh, he is out for 21 days. Um, I know some of the other, um, you know, quarantine things we've heard 10 days 14 days but for a big 10 player from what i saw in that statement 21 days how is that going to affect if a crucial football player is out for 21 days that he misses three games you can't practice with that player for three games that could totally turn the conference upside down and 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 it's legitimate because you want to keep the players safe but i think that is a big factor how healthy can you keep your starters uh, and not just, uh, you know, obviously broken bones, sprained ankles, but uh, uh, healthy from not, uh, you know, getting a positive test. And uh, I think that could be the biggest shifter uh, within the conference of who play, uh, who can beat who on any given day. Jay, I know it's been a while, but put yourself back in the position of a player. What's this like, kind of the stopping and starting and thinking you're not playing and now you find out you are playing? What's the challenge there mentally? It's a, it's a challenge, but you know, I one of the favorite lines of college football coaches are, and Dave, you've interviewed hundreds, if not thousands of coaches and college football coaches is what? Control what you can control. I mean, it's almost, it, it, it's, it's, almost, it's gotta be a top five line uh, spoken. So this is exactly what they've been telling, uh, you know, players all the time. If you can't control it, you don't have any control, you can't worry about it. Uh, They've just had to be faithful in what they've done. A lot of these coaches, I saw Ryan Day come out and say that the players had never lost faith, that they believed that they were going to get back on the field. So I think it's an an exciting time. Um, I do think it affects programs differently, Dave. I think that, um, you know, we've had a lot of stars already say they're not playing uh, in the Big Ten this season. Uh, Will that change now that the season got uh, not bumped up, but scheduled for October 23rd and 24th. So I think that's interesting. Um, and I think it's interesting too, for staffs that have returning starters, uh, returning quarterbacks, returning coaching staffs as, as to someone like Michigan state, who's got a, a new quarterback, a lot of new players on the defense and a new coaching staff. I just think this whole, uh, pandemic affects teams differently. And so I'm really curious to see what it looks like during this nine game stretch. Yeah, Jay, put on your analyst cap here. I mean, you got into a few of the questions there in terms of how it impacts different teams differently. But what are the questions that you're most excited to see answered on the field? Yeah, one is, is Ohio State going to make a run or some other team for the playoff? Obviously, Ohio State's probably the favorite, but I know Michigan and Penn State and probably Wisconsin uh, want to have it, have a chance at it. I think what's interesting, number one, is without the Pac-12 playing currently, We've got four Power Five conferences. Uh, we, we've talked about four big Power Five conferences, uh, you know, in the future to kind of get rid of this problem of five Power Five conferences, and one of them always gets left out. So my guess is this: if you run the table in the Big Ten, um, and there's not much room for error in a nine-game season, that's for sure. But if you're on the table, you're probably into the playoffs. So that's number one. Number two, I would say, what about these teams? Um, that had high-profile players that I mentioned 
that are they going to come back? And the teams that don't have high profile players, um, let's say a team maybe like Illinois or maybe like um, uh, Iowa that maybe don't have first round picks just on their roster, seeing they're ready to play. Um, and certainly not a knock to them at, at all, but does that help them? Because those players need to play to maybe increase draft position or they don't, they're not going to lose draft position. And then, um, freshman classes like the freshmen have been on campus some of them since since january um is the freshmen more ready to play and if those high profile players are not going to play or they're going to sit out or they're out maybe because of a positive test the freshmen are going to have to really rise up which really brings into the question of depth uh we know that there's been a lot of depth at the elite programs but for programs that are in that lower echelon of the big 10 i think it's going to be difficult if you have a positive test to keep position to compete at the level you'd like to. Well, one of the things that's really interesting, you don't need to worry about the four-game redshirt rule this year, right? I mean, every player in college football essentially gets a redshirt year. This is not going to count against anyone's eligibility. And so kind of to your point about depth, I mean, freshmen, there's no disincentive at all now to playing freshmen. There's no disincentive to playing anyone. You you put out whoever's available and you try to kind of cobble it together from your available players from a, a week-to-week basis. But again, it, it changes the calculus a little bit for coaches, Jay. Well, I mean, absolutely. And I think that's why you're going to see freshmen play sooner. I also think they're going to, at times, look more conservative and maybe a little sloppy at some times with the first game or two as they kind of get that hashed out. But I also think the playbook's going to be wide open. I think this will be the most exciting nine-game stretch in – Big Ten football, and I'm going to say Big Ten football history because that, that, that's a little, that, that's, hyper, that's hyperbolic. But I would say this, it's, it's going to be very exciting because it's all conference games. Everybody knows that the energy notches up when you're playing a conference opponent. I think that's true in any league, but especially in the Big Ten. So we've got all conference games. It's basically if you win out, you're into the playoff, uh, in my opinion, because the pac 12s out. So the stakes are high. And, and, you know, lastly, it's it's like there's nothing off the table. You could be third string and move to first string in a week with everything that's going on based on the testing that goes on daily, the testing that goes on before games. There's so many different factors. You really do got to be able to play at – be ready to play at any time. Jay Lehman, I love the fact we're already talking about the college football playoff. And where right. The I mean, we got to start. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just yeah. standard. When the Heisman Trophy's next, right? So, <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think Justin Fields is the clear front runner. I don't think there's any doubt about that right now. Yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> Jay Lehman, thanks so much. Can't wait to be talking about real games with you coming up in a month or so. All right. See you guys.